conference. Um, we're delighted to welcome Rabbi David Rosier from Muswell Hill. Um, so, thank you. Um, thank you, Rabbi Stephen. Um, really appreciate being invited here. Uh, Desiree really nice. and I, really good to be with you all, both here in person and online, and to be able to share some words of Torah. Nice to be sitting next to my uh, awesome colleague. Um, I, um, you've got someone, oh, my uh, my brother's father in law. You've got to let my brother's father in law. That's Malcolm and Malcolm and Judy Cowan there. He's there. Welcoming in my uh, brother's father in law, Malcolm Cowan, into the room. There you are. He said, to, he's, he said to me by the end of the year he'd stop supporting Manchester City. Is that right, Malcolm? <laughs> totally, totally, so totally Rabbi, wrong. Um, totally wrong, David. The rabbi before me at Muswell Hill uh, was a man called David Lister. Um, and what they did at the end after that is they said, you know what, all we'll do is we'll get another David and we'll just go next letter in the alphabet. So they, so they, want, they got David Mason. Right, so it's a very easy job for them, David, and an N somewhere there'll be a rub. <laughs> Definitely find them somewhere, but they are clearly the next rabbi of Muswell Hill. But it's really good to be. It's good to be in Edgeware. So I'm working now for an organisation actually that supports um, asylum seekers and refugees. It's an interesting work for a Jewish boy. Um, an organisation called JCOR. Uh, we've merged or uh, work now combined with a big organisation in America called the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. Does oh. support yeah, hi, Adams, actually, uh, which, does, which will now do a lot more befriending and mentoring and support work with refugees and, and all that. All that sort of gashef. But, but I'm not here for that. I'm here um, to speak to you for about 10 minutes or so about um, something which always interests me. If you want a great set of shiurim, it's the introductions of a rav called the Natsiv to the Chamisha Chum Torah. The, the Nitziv, again, I, I, you might have heard, you might not. The Nitziv was a rabbi in the 19th century. He was the last Rosh Hashiva of a yeshiva called the Lozhin. And he is known as Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin. And in fact, if I'm right, his son was mayor of Bar Ilan, which is named for Bar Ilan. And you can the rest is history, right? The university, we know. His other son was one of those that was Chaim Berlin. Um, from which a dynasty of Rabbonim came in terms of in, in Shiva, um, Rahut, I think, was a Talmud of Rav Chaim Berlin, um, the Pachad So So um, the Nitziv is one of the greats, an incredible commentary, and he is so insightful. Because what he does in each of the five books of the Torah, he says, you know the name of the, the, the Sefer, right? Sefer Bereshit, Sefer Shemot. But remember, those names really come from one of the words at the beginning of the First parasha, right? So Bereshit might do it for us. The book of creation, probably for that, but there's a lot more going on than creation. Shmot, Sefer Shmot, the book of names. Uh, I don't know, really. Why is it called that? Because of the names of those that came down to Mitzrayim. So what he does is looks at Hazal to look at, well, is there another echo of a name for this book that would teach us more about the themes of this book? And for Bamid Bar, it's absolutely fascinating because he looks at the book of Bamid Bar as a book of transition. That's really what he would call it. He, he, he uses the word Zea Sefer, who ha machalif, u meshane halichot am Hashem bechai haolam. It's the book of the transition. Machalif is really a transition and change of the ways of God in the world. And that's a fascinating idea, right? Change is hard. Transition is hard, right? I should know. I've just taken on one of them, right? In the middle of my life to go from being a rabbi to not being a rabbi. You know, look, I'm so, I'm so sad. <laughs> you can see I'm in tears about gone from the rabbi. There. It's, it's awful. I don't, I, I, I wake up every morning and I swear I can't do it. You know, <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> But, um, but I think it's quite fascinating and important that you have a rabbi who's able to impose, inject some sort of psychological in, in sort of intuition into what's going on in the Torah. And he basically says, 
the book of Bamidbar is the change from the way of the Midbar to the way of Eretz Israel. This nation needs to transform itself from being a, in the way of miracle, where everything can be run alpines by miracle, to the way of Eretz Israel, where it cannot be run alpi, at least nes nigle. Right, Ramban actually, Nachmanides talks about how the higher level is miracles that are uh, um, like hidden. He says this at the end of Parshat Bo, the, the classic Ramban. There's a classic, if you ever want to go for a, a classic Ramban commentary, it's the end of Parshat Bo, where he talks about um, the uh, mitzvot connected to Mitzrayim, the importance of mitzvot remembering the exodus from Egypt, right? And he says there, the idea is to go from belief in God determined by open miracles to a belief in God that's defined by hidden miracles. They're better. You've got to look harder for God. The reward is greater. Mm -hmm. And so these people have got to make a big change from being a child, in a way, that's dependent on their parent, gets their needs. Right? We say that the, the what was it, the manna was the, the merit of Moshe, and the Be'er, the well was the merit of Miriam, and the cloud the merit of Aaron. Right? They're getting their needs. And suddenly, towards the end of their time in the Midbar, these needs are going to slowly mm -hmm. stop. Yeah. And God wants to show the people they can change. For the Natsiv, you can see the change in the two different senses. Sensai or whatever word we use for it, right? There are two different counts. One in Parshat Bamidbar, and one we just read in Parshat Tumcha. And the Natsiv notes that in the ordering of the Shvatim, in Parshat Bamidbar, the two sons of Yosef, Ephraim, comes before Manasseh. All well, these things you'd miss if you didn't really look for it. You know when you're reading, you're laying in, you're, you're in shul, right? And you've got the chumash in front of you. You're not talking to your neighbor, right? And you're listening, you're listening to Balkara, right? And you're like, but that's the bit where there's not much Rashi on. You read through it, and it's the count, right? And suddenly, boom, he says, well, in the but in Pinchas, Manasseh is before Ephraim. It's switched. For him, Ephraim is the pure, higher, spiritual more miraculous related of the two. Menashe is the more messy one. There'll be more messiness that comes out of his progeny. And so in Bamidbar Ephraim's first, that's the way of miracle and desert. In Pinchas, Menashe's first, that's the way more of educating and encouraging these people to think. You can't live by that way anymore. You've got to now enter Eretz Israel. And there's an amazing point he brings out here, which relates to Moshe. And when Moshe hits the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Because if you look at the Psukim, right, where, where that happens, here we are. You won't get it. So we had it, you know, perfectly uh, you know, ready by right, Jeffrey. will tell me after. This is not, you know, it's not how a rabbi should uh is <laughs> right. So here we're about to we're about to mind it. There we are. So what happens by the rest of Moshe? God says to him after they complain for water, take the stick, conquer all the people, blah, blah, and speak to the rock. Why take the stick? Surely that's like recipe for disaster to take the stick. So the Natsiv says here, from Natalie Svi of Berlin, that the stick was almost like a comforter to remind the Am of the miracles that they've been going through in the Midbar. In other words, you can't change radically. You can't go off a cliff and change just like that, from mode A to mode B, to move these people from being reliant on miracles to immediately being reliant not on miracles. Ah, you'll say the water's a miracle, but it's a different mode. It's a more internal mode than just whack. And the mater, the stick, was what did the, 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 the plagues, right? Many of the Nisim were through the mater. When they saw the mater, the rod, the star, they thought, ah, everything's okay. Just like a child, right? Well, you know, there'll be certain, you know, a comforter. You know, the idea you put in a cot with a baby, a, a thing from the mother that's a little comforter. They'll feel okay. It'll calm them. The stick would calm them before then the idea was that Moshe was meant to actually not use it. Because that would be too much like the Midbar. And so in a sense, Moshe wasn't punished for doing it. He wasn't the right leader to take the Am into Eretz Israel, He was the Nase leader. He was the leader of, uh, of Derech Hanes. 
not the leader of Derech Ha'eretz, if you want to say, of the way of the land, of, of being there. Right? It just makes me think of a Gemara and Brachot, where they talk about, you know, can one, um, should one learn Torah or work? Should you work with Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yosef says someone should learn all day and not work. And Rabbi Shimon says, Torah and Derech You should work as well. Be a person in the world as well. And afterwards, the Gemara says, Many did not I did not succeed. Many did like Rishma, they did succeed. Very much for the few to live like that, for the average person, right? You live in the world. Um, and what's really interesting is the Natsiv goes back to Bereshit. Bereshit is like a sort of almost a laboratory of existence. You go back there, right? So famously it says. God split between the higher and the lower waters. And the Midrash says, Misham nolda machlokit. Machlokis. Right, whenever you have a machlokis in Shul, I mean, we don't have that in Shul. Right. Then, <laughs> then uh, no, 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 in my Shul. Yes, yeah, so of course, in the Shul. Right. Kenton. <laughs> they are born. They, <laughs> they, um, Right, so machloket actually is a good thing. Machloket, according to the mission in, in Avot, is meant to last. A good machloket the Shem Shemayim, so far lehit kayem, is meant to ever, go on forever. So there actually, machloket is something that's actually not just a thing, it's something from creation. It's part of our existence. Machloket is good. So it says here also, the Natsim, right? We see, by Abdel Elohim Beina Oru Beina Chod. What separates between the light and the dark? Zeh Sefer Bamidbar. This is the, our book that we're in now, Bamidbar. Shu Mabdil ben Yotse Mitzrayim u ben Ba'e Ha'aretz. That separates between those coming out of Egypt, who are the light, and those that are going into Eretz Israel, who are the darkness. Because when they were going out of Egypt into the Midbar, into the desert, in that world, or Hashem, Haya Mofia Le'en. Right, we say by the yam, don't we? That even the the um the shifcha, even the maidservant at the sea could see the prophecy like Yechezkel ben Buzi. Actually, quotes that, doesn't it? Right. So everyone could see there was a clarity. There was an absolute clarity in the midbar of of of, of, of belief, I suppose. Not the case when they came into Israel. Or mechusah, probably. The providence was hidden. That's our life, isn't it? Providence is hidden. Barak hamabit, I love this actually. Barak hamabit ve'en yafeh haya margishba. Only the one who looks carefully can see divine providence. It's not saying darkness means there's no providence. It's saying you've got to look more carefully. Kamo ha'holech v'cheshchat laila. Like someone who walks in darkness. Right? Or rak leprakim ha'en nishgash. Or from time to time. And I also find it interesting in the context that the Bnei Israel often wanted to go back to actually in my but they certainly didn't want to go forward, right? There's the Muraglim, etc. They're fearing the world of normality where God's providence is more hidden, where my gosh, they've got to fight wars. My God takes them away from the Christian when they come out of Mitzrayim. He knows that's going to be a problem. So I find this an absolutely fascinating um, in, in interpretation of the Book of Bamidbar. He says, quoting Chazal, that they called it Chumash Hapakudim. We know that, Chumash Hapakudim. Probably the best name for it that we know is the Book of Numbers. Numbers of the, the Book of Counts. But using this interpretation, a better understanding of Bamidbar is a book of transition. Where we learn from God, actually, how the best way to make a transition is. Not to make it in an immediate nature. Not to go and take a group of people from one mode to the other without preparation. But always we're moving to have in mind where they come from. And that's how God tries to educate Moshe or encourage Moshe and Am Israel. Moshe doesn't do that. But we learn it from God nevertheless. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Anyone want a, a quick question? Um, yeah. Anyone? Quick question? Anybody? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, well, can well, I have a just one quick question? Have I mentioned this? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks everyone for joining us as well. Um, uh, I'll advise who the speaker is next week, um, sometime during the week. Um, I will turn off the Zoom now and I will do the Bracha Acharona. One second.